नमस्ते एवरीवन एंड मे दिस गुरु पूर्णिमा बी मोस्ट ब्लेसेड वन मे वी बिकम मोर डिजर्विंग ऑफ द ब्लेसिंग्स एंड ग्रेस द ग्रेट हिंदू रिलीजन is expert in conveying most complex things in a simple way through mantras simple sentences conveying the truth but we re- we keep repeating those sentences few words as if they are everything they are only the code words and we have to decipher them in our life there are three steps to all this we receive this knowledge either through elders or through books for example sat chit anand only three words or aham brahmasmi These are Mahavakyas, conveying the great truths. But repeating them is not going to give us even the slightest of inkling of knowledge. We have to digest this, try to understand the deeper meaning behind all these things and see how this truth can be grasped by our chit and arrive at anandam similarly how we can attain such conditions like aham brahmasmi and then move on to the next stage and then to the next stage likewise guru purnima is also a coded word there's nothing to do with full moon Coincidentally, Lord Buddha attained Mahalirvana on full moon night. That's a different story altogether. It's just coincidental. Mahavira. And our Pujya Babaji Maharaj, they both attained or they realized on the day of Diwali Abhavasya. Something to think about. This coded word Guru Purnima is loaded with meaning. Purnima means fullness, completeness. Guru. Gu means darkness. Ru means dispelling this darkness. That's a definition of Guru. And completely removal or completely removing this darkness. When we are arriving at such a state, it is Purnima, completeness of full awareness. Not partial, not 10%, not 1%, but complete awareness. And awareness of what? What sort of awareness should we have that becomes equivalent to state of Buddha or complete realization or state of negation as Mahabhuji puts it? How are they different? Is negation different from self-realization or nirvana? Celebrating such days needs a lot of contemplation. You have to go behind the meanings, convey the true meaning behind it. Let's not make it a ritual. You can spend all your lives, not just one poor neighbor or ten poor neighbor. You can spend your lives with your gurus. But with unawareness, you go nowhere. I'd like to share a story I read this morning. There was a sannyasi 
and he also had a couple of disciples. They go from village to village. They collect bhiksha. One day he received a very special gift. And receiving that gift, he was very much delayed before leaving that village. Once they were about to leave the village, he told his sisters, let's rush. We'll be passing through a forest. We don't want to be uh, violently be attacked by someone. So his disciples were very surprised. Okay, all these years, he never explained or mentioned about what is related to forest or being attacked by someone. How is it? What has happened to our sannyasi? Anyway, <laughs> sannyasi was carrying a Zola, one of his bags on his shoulder. Later on, as they walked through the forests, sannyasi was thirsty. He said, let's go get some water. So they go near the well. One of the disciples was very curious. So why our sannyasi is requesting to be more careful today? All these years we slept under the trees, never worried about tigers also. And today he is very perplexed. His behavior is not understandable. Well, he looked into the bags. But Sanyasi told him, look after this bag until I come back. Don't lose it. So that also alarmed him, there must be something in the bag. So he saw there were two bricks, not ordinary bricks, gold bricks. This disciple was very mischievous. He threw both the bricks and put two rocks inside, equivalent weight. And they walked off. Sanyasi is merrily walking with his Zola. He was mentioning to his disciples, let's be more careful. He should be more careful because dangers are there. So this disciple couldn't stop himself. He said, I have removed all the dangers. He said, what do you mean? He said, the cold bricks that you had, I threw it away into the, near the well. Oh, then what is inside? He said, there's a rock. We have a different story here. We have a very precious antaryamin within. Much precious. Much more precious than a gold brick. How many of us are aware of it? We are absolutely unaware of it. Bringing this awareness to the depth of our being in every cell of our body singing, yes, I am part of the divinity. That is realization. There is nothing more than that. We don't have to wait for Purnimas to come and Guru to bestow the blessings, you can have it any day, at any moment, anywhere. Just remain open, without any layers of samskaras, prejudice, narrow-mindedness. All these things obliterate our vision. Even the most beautiful mirror won't let you see through that mirror. You can only see yourself. What is the difference between the mirror on the wall and the window glass in the window? Mirror is coated with that silver oxide makes you see things inside your face. However beautiful, it still blocks what is on the other side. Transparent window makes you see the beautiful world. 
transparent inside makes us see the beauty of Odantari Amin, makes us realize the value of it. That moment is Purnima, complete maturing or unfolding of the beauty reflected in us, the beauty of divinity reflected in us completely. The moon reflects the sun. We would end up reflecting our gurus. The way we live our life, you know what I'm trying to say, are they reflecting our gurus, our lifestyle? Is it reflecting the values of heartfulness? Completely, not partially, completely. Please think over all this. On this very auspicious occasion, the Heartfulness Forestation Project is in full swing in Madhya Pradesh, in Gujarat, in Uttar Pradesh, many such states. On this day, I would like to declare something very precious. I lost my mother very recently in the month of March. So let's plant something in the memory of our parents, at least one tree in their memory, one tree for our parents, at least one. If you can afford to plant more, or if you cannot plant what you would like us to plant on your behalf, we'll be happy to do it. The Honorable Deputy Chief Minister, Mr. Soklaji of Madhya Pradesh, they are planting trees at the moment as we are speaking at Satana. Our heartfulness team is already there besides his table. And this forest, as per his suggestion, is being named at Santa Ven Forest, and I'm very grateful for that thing. We can have many such forests, and it rhymes well because Santa Ven and Santi Vanam, this sounds proper, I think. So let's all contribute with open hearts, whatever we can. There is no force upon anyone, but more individuals participate in this scheme, better it will be. Thank you. Thank you so much.